Hey sis, long time no see. <coughs> Helen, why don't you respond? Um, who are you? Come on, don't act like you don't know me. I'm your little sister, Emma. Emma? I thought I blocked you five years ago. Why are you texting me? That's terrible. How can you block your own sister? Mom and Dad have cut me off, so when I ask them to give me your contact information, they ignore me. I had to create another phone number to contact you, you know. I can't believe you went through all that trouble to contact me. You must have something really important to tell me, right? What? I told you I will never forgive you. I told you never to contact me again. You're so cold. Are you still mad at me? It's been five years. Forget about the past. Besides, we're sisters. Can't I at least text you? I don't consider you my sister. You took my husband away from me. You may forget it, but I'll never forget it. You're still holding on to that? You're a vindictive sister, aren't you? Emma, you seduced my husband when I wasn't looking. Of course I'm still mad because you ruined my family. It couldn't be helped. It's your fault for letting your guard down. If you don't want to lose your husband, you need to refine yourself as a woman. If you're off guard after getting married, a hot girl like me would take your husband away from you. Well, in a way, I'm grateful to you too. Because of you, I realized that my ex-husband was a man who would be swayed by a slut like you. Don't talk like that. It's natural for a man to choose a beautiful woman over an ugly one. So what do you want? I'm busy right now. I don't have time for your nonsense. Nonsense? Oh, you're so icy. I had to tell you something today. What is it? Hmm, I'm actually expecting a baby. Wow, congratulations. Aren't you surprised? Not really. Whose baby do you think it is? You stole Alex from me and you're having a baby with him, right? No, I'm not. Alex and I broke up a long time ago. What? You're divorced already? It's not that surprising, is it? Divorces are nothing unusual nowadays. It's natural to break up when love grows cold. Love grows cold? In your case, you stole my husband away from me to get married. That's how much you loved Alex, right? Mom and Dad couldn't forgive you for stealing my husband away from me. They even banned you from visiting their house. Of course I liked Alex at first, but after a year together, I got bored. Bored? When we used to date while hiding from you, it was fun and thrilling. But when Alex was completely mine, there's not much stimulation. Alex is just an ordinary guy, you know. To be honest, it's boring to be with him. You ruined my family. You are such a terrible person. I'm sorry. I feel like I treated Alex like disposables. I should have returned him to you before throwing him away. No thanks. I don't even like Alex anymore. So you have a new husband now, right? I'm not married yet. What? You're okay with having a baby before getting married? I'd like to avoid that, so I'm thinking I'll have to get registered soon. My boyfriend, who is the father of my baby, says he wants to marry me too. Well, that's great. Well, I wish you all the best. The conversation is over now. No, no, no. What? Helen, here's the thing. Huh? Who do you think is the father of the child? I don't know. He's going to be your sister's husband. You're not interested? I'm not interested. It doesn't matter to me. Well, I'll give you a hint. He's the one who was closest to you. Who's that? Max. Max? Yep, I stole your husband again. My husband? Max is your husband. He's so cool. He's a famous dancer. You know, Helen, you found a pretty nice guy for a plain 30-something woman like you. I can't believe you got married to a super hot dancer before I knew it. What? But he's too good for you, so I stole him from you. Max is not my husband. Huh? What's wrong, Helen? Maybe you're too shocked. You don't even know who your own husband is. I know what I'm saying. He's really not my husband. I see. Poor Helen. Huh? You don't want to admit that your sister took your husband. That's why you're trying so hard to deflect reality. I think I'm looking at reality. By the way, where did you meet Max? 
My friend invited me to a group blind date and Max was there. I hadn't seen you for years. I didn't even know if you got married. So at first I just thought he was a really cool guy. But when I sat down next to him and talked to him, he surprised me. He was your husband. I flirted with him as much as I could. Oh, I see. It's a small world, isn't it? I'm sorry. I'm always stealing your important people. No, it's okay. I don't really care about him. But are you sure you're okay with Max? You're playing tough again. I'm sure your husband will ask you for a divorce soon. Be sure to comply straightforwardly. You and Max don't have any children yet, right? Just give up on him and look for another husband. You're already 32 years old. You'll lose your chance if you don't act soon. You know what, Emma? Let me ask you something. Why did you think Max was my husband? What? Max himself told me. He did? He said Helen is my wife, but he also said you're prettier than her, so I'm getting together with you. I see. That means you lost to me. Well, there's no way you can beat me, Helen. I've always wondered, why do you go after my boyfriend or husband? Ever since we were teenagers, whenever I had a boyfriend, he always tried to steal him away. It's payback. What? Payback? Payback for what? Did I do something bad to you? Ever since we were kids, you've been an honor student who's good at studying, playing sports. You've always had a good reputation among the teachers at school. I've always been compared to you, and I've always felt frustrated. Huh? That's not my fault, is it? Why is that? I had a rough childhood because of you. Do you know how I felt when I was always told that my sister was so much better than me? It may have been hard for you to be compared to me, but you were always trying to look for an easy way out. You always tried to take it easy and never put any effort into your studies or sports. You were always skipping school. I wasn't born with talent. I worked harder than anyone else and that's why I got the results I did. There you go. You always told me to work hard. That kind of honor student attitude pisses me off. Well, I was a total failure in everything I did. The only thing I had that was better than you was my face. So I used my beauty as a weapon. That's how I decided to steal your boyfriend's. That's absurd. So you were competing against me for such a stupid reason. When I stole your boyfriend and saw the look of frustration on your face, I felt a sense of accomplishment. You're such a wicked person. But don't worry, I'm satisfied now that I'm giving birth to your husband's child. This is the end of my revenge. I want to get married before the baby is born. You should just admit defeat and divorce your husband. I'm not even married to him, and you're asking me to divorce him. You may not like it, but I need to get married as soon as possible. I heard from a friend of mine. I heard that everything is just easier if you get married and start living together before the baby is born. I guess so. That's why I want you to leave your husband as soon as possible. In exchange, when the baby is born, I'll tell you first. You don't have to tell me. Don't be shy. You want to see pictures of the baby, right? I don't need to see them. Don't say that. It's me and Max's baby. The baby is going to be so cute. I'll send you lots of pictures. Look forward to it. Helen, I'm so touched. Thank you for divorcing your husband so quickly. What? Thanks to you, Max and I are now a married couple. I'm so glad. To be honest, I was worried if you would leave your husband before I had the baby. But you're so kind, Helen. You backed down gracefully for your little sister's sake. I'll pay you compensation, so please forgive me for taking your husband away from you. I'm not divorced, and I don't want compensation. What? Why are you lying? Do you regret leaving him now? I didn't leave my husband. Are you going to be so stubborn again? Max said he's single now. He's single because he divorced you. So you really got married to Max? That's right. You may have a hard time from now on, but hang in there. What? What do you mean, hard time? He's a successful top-class dancer. I'm not going to have a hard time. Instead, I'm going to live a gracious life. A gracious life? So, I'll pay you compensation as much as you want. I don't want compensation. Why not? I stole your husband away from you. You have the right to demand compensation from me. I think you're wrong about that. Anyway, I can't get compensation. You don't have to be so stubborn. Well, if you ever need money, just let me know. 
You're divorced and heading straight for poverty. You don't have to be shy. Okay, okay. Helen, sorry to have kept you waiting. I gave birth to the baby of the man I stole from you. A cute little girl who looks just like Max. I'm sorry for you, Helen. He divorced you before I had the baby, but I'm happy I took away your happiness. I'll be happy for you. Max is crazy about our daughter, too. First of all, congratulations on the birth. But I'm going to say it again. That man is not my husband. Huh? I didn't tell you for a long time because you kept talking about it one-sidedly. I have a husband and a child. Of course, my husband is not Max. He's someone else. What? You've already remarried? If you have a child, does that mean your new husband had a child? No, I got married to my current husband two years after my divorce from Alex. Our child is two years old now. You're lying. So, it's true that Max isn't your husband? That's what I've been saying all along. But he said you're his wife. Such a troublesome person. He has a habit of telling lies. So he was lying to me? It's true that after I divorced Alex, I started going out with Max, who was introduced to me by a friend of mine. But we were together only for a short time, and we broke up early. Of course, we never got married. Then why did Max lie about you being his wife? When I broke up with Max, he made a big fuss saying he didn't want me to leave him. Max wanted to marry me. Even after we broke up, Max and his parents followed me around for a while. Oh my god, even his parents? After I started dating my current husband, they stopped following me. He had a desire for me to be his wife. Maybe that's what he told you that I was his wife. Oh no, so you're saying that I wasn't able to take your husband away from you? I'm afraid so. You surprised me. We've only been dating for a little over a month. I couldn't believe he called me his wife. I was also horrified that Max was still obsessed with me. Helen, you should have told me that earlier. I was so happy to think I'd succeeded in plundering your husband. Well, he's my ex-boyfriend, so just let it go at that. No way. It's boring to be with a guy you've already broken up with. Let me ask you something. If you knew Max wasn't my husband, you wouldn't have married him? No, that's not true, because Max is a famous dancer. Too bad he wasn't your husband, but I got a rich and handsome husband. I'm happy with that. That's the thing. And might you believe he's a famous dancer? Wait, is that a lie too? Bingo. Ugh. Max probably said I'm a famous dancer, but Emma, have you ever been to one of his performances? Have you seen him on TV or on the internet? Come to think of it, I've never seen him perform. I know Max likes to dance, but he's by no means famous. He uploads his dance videos on video sites every once in a while, but the number of views is always in the single digit. What? So he's not a famous dancer, but a self-proclaimed dancer. He's actually a poor freelancer. A freelancer? Did you really think Max was a professional dancer? Well, he was practicing his dances very hard, and when he took off his clothes, he was so muscular. He's not muscular because he's a dancer. I think he's muscular because he works part-time doing hard labor. I broke up with him because he wanted to be a kept man. A kept man? It's fine to dream that he'll be a famous dancer someday, but in reality, he's a freelancer living off his parents' money. It's fine if he's earning enough to feed himself, even if he only has a part-time job. But in Max's case, he had no intention of becoming independent. He wanted to marry me, but I didn't want to support a dreamy kept man, so I left him quickly. Wait a minute, so Max married me so that he could be supported by me? Probably. You're a full-time employee. He probably thought he wouldn't have to work if he got married to you, and could devote himself to dancing. Oh no, you're terrible, Helen. Why me? If you told me about Max's true identity earlier, I wouldn't have gone after him. Well, you were about to have a baby. I couldn't say you shouldn't go for Max. Besides, you married Max because you liked his handsome face, right? True, Max is handsome, but... But handsome alone is not enough to make a living. I just had a baby and I can't support my husband by myself. Maybe it's too late to say that. You do your best to earn money. Or you should get Max to work, too. I've got an idea. Helen, let's trade husbands. What? I'll give Max to you. Give me your husband. Excuse me? 
You said you met your husband at your workplace, right? So your husband is a company employee, right? Yes, but I'd rather marry a stable company employee than a self-proclaimed dancer. What a nonsense! Husbands are not things. Don't say so easily that you want to trade husbands. You were so preoccupied with plundering my husband that you couldn't see Max's true nature. But you chose Max of your own will, and you already have a child. You should be happy with Max. That's impossible. I can't be happy with a dreamy freelancer. Well then, good luck taking care of the baby and your husband. I don't like this, Helen. <coughs> Help me. What am I going to do now? I don't know. You're on your own. <coughs> Helen. Emma is still married to Max, a self-proclaimed dancer who's chasing his dream. Rumor has it that Emma leaves her child at a daycare center and works. But she's exhausted from work, childcare, and taking care of her husband. She's now looking 10 years older than she used to look. Even if she tries to ask her parents for help, her parents have cut ties with her, so they won't help her. As for Max's parents, just like Max, they only think of depending on Emma, so they won't help Emma either. Emma regrets that it wasn't supposed to be like this. As for me, I am spending my lively days with my sweet husband and my lovely two-year-old daughter. And recently, I found out that I am pregnant with my second child. I'm looking forward to the birth of our second child together with my family. Huh? My daughter is calling me at this hour. I can't really hear her. Yes. Hello. What's wrong, Nicole? Dad, Dad, can you hear me? It's me, Nicole. Hey, Nicole, what's up? Dad, help me. Nicole, what's wrong? I can't take it anymore. I just landed at the international airport. I need you to come and get me. What? You're back home already? You're supposed to be in China with your mom, right? There's been a bit of a mix-up. My face and body are all hurt, and huh? Why isn't your mom with you? I can't tell you that. She can't just send her high school daughter back home by herself. Yeah. I've been calling your mom, but she's not answering. Considering the time difference, it's morning in China now, right? Right. It's not midnight or anything. Why isn't she answering? Is there something you're not telling me? What's going on? You're gonna have to be more specific. I'm in pain all over my body, and I need to go to the hospital right away. I can barely walk. Are you hurt? A little. What happened? Did you get into some kind of trouble? Tell me the details. Sorry, can we do that later? I'm at my wit's end. Ask someone at the airport to call an ambulance. I'm going to the airport now too. Nicole, hey. Are you okay? Hey, what the hell are you doing? How could you do such a terrible thing? You should know better as a mother. I really can't believe it. Excuse me. I don't know why you're abusing me like this. How can you let your daughter come back from China alone? What are you talking about? You went to China with her, remember? Her face and body are covered in scars. You're her mother. What are you doing? I never went abroad. What? Don't lie to me. I drove you to the airport. I got a call before boarding that my father was in critical condition, so I went straight to my parents' place. What about Nicole? Of course, I asked her to come with me, but she got upset that the trip was canceled. She says she'd go home, so I just gave her the cab fare. But your father loves Nicole. Nicole must have wanted to come with you. It's just so weird to think that she would come home alone. I told her the same thing, but she was so mad that I couldn't handle it. She's a high school student. I thought she would be safe if she's taking a cab, so I let her go home alone. That's not what Nicole told me. You mean she hasn't been home for the past few days? That's right. I wonder where she's been all this time. I wonder if she's gotten herself involved in something strange. That's all I'm worried about. Why didn't you call me sooner? I figured you'd figure it out when Nicole got home. And I've been kind of busy. I figured I'd hear from you if anything happened. I thought you guys were in China together. 
We just wanted to get a preview of China before Nicole goes there on a study abroad program. There's no rush, so we decided to take a rain check. Nicole said she flew back alone and wanted me to pick her up at the airport. She says she had a pain and needed to go to the hospital. I haven't heard from her since. I hope she's not involved in some kind of trouble. Or is Nicole up to something? What do you mean? Have you tried calling Nicole? She's not answering. Anyway, I got a cab and I'm heading to the airport. What the hell is she doing? Is your father going to be okay? For now, but my mom's a little distracted and unstable, so I wanted to stay with her a little longer. But with Nicole in such a state, it's going to be impossible. I'll be fine. You can stay by her side. I'll take care of Nicole. But I'll talk to the police as well. If we make too big a deal out of it, it might make it harder for Nicole to come home. She might just be acting like a prankster because she's unhappy that the trip was canceled. We don't have time to joke about this situation. What if something really happened to her? It's too late for regrets, you know. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, call me if you find out anything. I'm so worried. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'll call you. We found Nicole. What? Where was she? At the hospital. She was badly injured. Broken ribs and injury to internal organs. Oh no. I don't know why she was at the airport. Apparently, she didn't call an ambulance. She took a cab. And in the cab, she complained of severe pain, and the driver took her to the hospital. I'm glad the nurse called me. Is Nicole okay? The surgery went well. She was a little conscious last night when I rushed over, but. She didn't tell me anything. They gave her some painkillers, so she's asleep now. Okay. The doctor said she's in a lot of emotional shock. I don't know what happened, but she broke her rib, which is a big deal. Poor thing. I know. I wonder what happened. Can you come over now? You know, in times like this, I think Nicole would want her mother by her side. Actually, my father's in critical condition again. What? But you said he got better yesterday. We were relieved about that last night, but I don't think he's going to make it. I think tonight is the most critical time. Okay, I'll take care of Nicole. I like to come home as soon as I can. I honestly don't know what to do. I can't believe so much is happening all at once. I'm scared. I'm overwhelmed with anxiety. Fortunately, Nicole is alive. She's in stable condition, so we'll be fine. Thank you. If you hadn't been there for her, I wouldn't have been able to support my mom. That's what families are for, right? You can count on me. I know. I'm glad I married you. I feel so much better knowing you're here. Me too. I'll be praying for your father. When he gets better, let's all go on a trip together again. I hope that day comes. I'm going back home to get Nicole a change of clothes. Take good care of Nicole. Hello, please get well, and I hope you will reply to this text soon. I pray from the bottom of my heart. Jerry, what's up? What kind of message is that? Huh? You've regained consciousness? Oh, thank God. I can't believe you've recovered enough to send me back text messages. Megan must be happy too. What? What are you talking about? That message you just sent me sound like I'm going to die. Well, Megan told me that you were in a critical condition. What are you talking about? I'm alive and well. I was eating jelly with my wife. What kind of a joke is that? Are you at home? Yes. Is Megan there? No, she hasn't visited us for six months. What about Nicole? Has she been there the past few days? I haven't seen Nicole forever. You should bring her around once in a while. I haven't seen her since she came to show me her new uniform for high school. She was saying she wanted to study abroad. If she's going to study abroad, remember to tell her to visit me before she leaves, okay? Oh, I see. So that's how it is. What happened? Nicole got seriously injured and is in the hospital right now. What? Why? I don't know the details, but it's becoming more and more likely that Megan is involved. What? Megan is lying to me. She canceled her trip to China with Nicole. She told me she rushed to the hospital because you're in critical condition. Why would she lie like that? 
I don't know. All I know for sure is that Nicole was seriously injured. Megan is hiding something. I'm glad I contacted you. Thanks to that, we now know that Megan is suspicious. Is Nicole going to be okay? Her internal organs were damaged, but the surgery was a success. But she seems to have suffered a lot of psychological damage. She won't talk about what happened. Can my wife and I visit the hospital too? I don't mind, but I don't know if Nicole will talk. I don't care. I want to see Nicole's face. Tell me which hospital. Understood. Thank you. I'm sure Nicole will be happy if you come. Yeah. Instead of just waiting for her to visit us, we should have just gone to see her ourselves. If we had done that, this might not have happened. That's not true. But if Megan had hurt Nicole, I wouldn't forgive her. If that's the case, I understand. I feel the same way. There's no need to condone what she'd done. Whether she's my daughter or not, I won't forgive anyone who would hurt my granddaughter. I'm relieved to hear that. Anyway, I'll wait for Nicole's recovery. She's the only one who knows the truth. We'll be there in two hours. You've been by Nicole's side the whole time, right? We'll take over. You get some rest. Thank you. My father is all better now. I'm thinking of coming home tomorrow. How is Nicole? Has she spoken yet? You never call Nicole's name again. Huh? What? What are you saying? I'm Nicole's mother. I'm supposed to be worried about her. It's not Nicole's condition you're worried about. It's whether or not Nicole will expose your lies. What do you mean? You lied to me about your father's condition. What? What are you talking about? I'm in the hospital with my father. Your father is with me right now. He's in the hospital with Nicole. No way. You thought there was no way I'd contact your father, right? Because your father was in critical condition, huh? That's why you lied so brazenly. I almost fell for your trap. Why did you fall for it? What's the point of contacting someone who's unconscious? When my mom was in critical condition, and I couldn't visit her right away, so I sent her a text, thinking she wouldn't read it. After a while, she regained consciousness. I was so happy when she replied back saying thank you. I remembered that. And so I texted your father, and I found out that you never went to your parents' house, and that your parents were both fine. Um, you got any excuses? Let's hear them. Nicole, what did she say? At first, she was in shock, and she wouldn't even look at me. But with your father and mother by her side, she gradually started to talk. What? She talked? Why are you surprised? I mean... Is it because she broke her promise to you guys? Of course, that's invalid. Threatening her and forcing her to make promises have no effect. So, she told you everything. Please, let me see Nicole. No, I can't. I don't know what you'll do to keep her quiet. I won't do anything. I'm glad she's doing well. I just want to see my daughter's cheerful face. Cheerful face? Nicole's mind and body are in shambles because your boyfriend had beaten her up. What? You let your boyfriend accompany you to China and Nicole saw you cheating, right? That's... Nicole told me everything. She said your boyfriend got mad at Nicole for accusing you and beating her up. He threatened her not to tell her father about this if she didn't want to go through this again. I'm sorry. He also threatened her, saying that he could do whatever he wanted to her father. To protect me, Nicole kept her mouth shut. She's still in high school and yet she was trying to protect me. I can't believe that such a good girl would be hurt by the worst people like you. I really can't forgive you. You know... You thought of a plot to have your father in critical condition and you sent a battered Nicole back home. You two have fun together, right? Did you enjoy it? It's not like that. What's not? I'm sure Nicole told you, but I didn't hurt her at all. You were there and you didn't help. You're just as guilty. I stopped him. I said it was too much. But then I saw how violent he was, and I thought maybe he'd hit me next. I was so scared. So what? What? You know, I'm really surprised at your in-your-face tactics. Earlier, you were trying to win me over to your side by pretending to be weak and inviting my sympathy. Do you really think that kind of tactic is going to work? Don't tell me such a terrible thing. You're the one who's terrible. Okay, let's just say that 
you couldn't stop your boyfriend from attacking Nicole because you were afraid of the guy. Yes. But you stayed in China. You put your wounded daughter on a plane by herself and then you spent days having fun with the guy. If you really cared about Nicole, you wouldn't have done that, would you? You could have rushed back home, called me, called an ambulance, called the police. There were so many things you could have done, but you didn't do it, right? Well, that's... She seemed fine, so I thought she'd be okay. Even though she had broken ribs and injury to internal organs? Um... I don't know how much force it takes to do something like that. Poor Nicole. I'll never forgive that guy. I'm sorry. I deserve to be thrown away. But I just want to apologize to Nicole. What are you playing at? Your apology gonna make Nicole's bones stick together? No, but... Then shut up. But I want to apologize. You just want to feel better, don't you? Nicole doesn't want your selfish apology. Are my parents angry? You don't have to ask. They're saying it's not even enough just to cut ties with you. I'm really sorry. I said I don't want an apology. Give me the guy's contact info. What? If you feel even a millimeter of remorse for Nicole, let me meet him. I can't do that. You're covering for him? I'm sorry, but no matter what you say, I can't sell him out. He's important to me. What? More than your daughter? It's not a comparison. Are you crazy? Because he's wild and manly. Every woman wants someone like him to rely on. He's just violent. How could someone hurt a 17-year-old girl? He's just an idiot with no reason and no brains. Is he really human? It's disrespectful to humanity to call himself a human being with such low intelligence. You're out of line. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying bad things about your precious boyfriend. Don't make fun of me. I'll get angry. Anyway, you're staying over at his house right after you got back from your trip with him? You can't stop yourself from getting excited being with him even when you hear that your daughter is in such a state? You're no better than animals. Huh? How do you know where I am? After hearing what Nicole told me, I put detectives on you guys just in time for you to return home. What are you doing? Just for a backup, I can't hold himself responsible if the guy runs away. I didn't realize I was being followed. I already have his address, and I've got the guy's license plate number. I'm gonna turn him into the police. Don't do that. He's got a nice apartment. Is he a CEO, or does he work for a big company? Well, I don't care at all. It's the end of his life anyway. Please don't. You may be rotten, but you're still a mother. What have you ever taught Nicole? Don't do bad things. If you do something bad, you go to jail. Isn't that what you've taught her? Yes, but... Parents have to set an example, don't they? But do you have any proof he hit Nicole? She's just saying that on her own. Everyone is just fooled by Nicole's made-up story. There's no proof. I have no proof. See? But Nicole's boyfriend has proof. What do you mean? Nicole was on the video phone. While she was taking a walk, she came across the scene of your affair. She was showing the scene to her boyfriend, discussing what to do. Right after that, you guys started arguing, and things got crazy. So Nicole's boyfriend started recording the call. Oh my god. He hadn't heard from Nicole since then, and he was so worried. But I was glad to know that he's such a wonderful man. He came to the hospital and cried when he saw Nicole. I'd be happy to leave my little girl with him. He's a lot more dependable than her mother, who's a total jerk. I didn't know. We know where he is. We have proof. You still want to run off? How much do you want? What? That's what my boyfriend says. He says he'll pay you a settlement. As much as you want. He'll pay you what you ask. Just don't go to the police. Don't belittle me. My precious daughter got hurt. You think I'm going to forgive you with money? But it's for the best, isn't it? Think about it. You don't have to do anything. You have a lot of money and live a life of elegance from now on. Yeah, big money is tempting. Isn't it? Well then, here's my best scenario. I throw you and your boyfriend in jail. And I'll sue you for compensation and child support. I'll rip you off until you can't pay a dime. Not both. I can't pay both. You have no right to negotiate. 
If that happens, I'll lose everything. Yes, you will. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm hoping for. You, please, let it go, please. Why should I? Why should I be compassionate to a criminal? My dad's not answering his phone. Tell him to help me. His precious only daughter is in trouble. My parents are all I have left. Your father says he doesn't know you. He says he doesn't know anyone who would hurt her only daughter so badly and also lie about her parent being in a critical condition. Oh no. The detectives have the video evidence. They're waiting for the police to arrive in front of the apartment. Please, I don't want to get caught. Oh yeah. Don't think you'll live peacefully when you get out of prison. What's that supposed to mean? It means look forward to that day. Bye. Wait, are you going to stalk me for the rest of my life? Don't ever do that. Hey, just answer me. I apologize. I don't want to go to jail. Of course, the two were arrested. The man was sentenced to five years in prison for assault. Megan also was sentenced for six years for complicity in a crime and neglect of a child. The man was working for a major company, but of course he was fired. The man got out of prison first and waited for Megan's release from prison. He told her, I lost everything because of you. He beaten her up and was back in prison. Megan, while suffering from mental illness, made money by working in a nightclub. She continues to pay compensation. She sacrificed her daughter just to enjoy a couple days of trip with her boyfriend. I can't help but snicker. As for Nicole, she recovered well, but she gave up to participate the study abroad program. I guess she still can't get rid of the bad memories. I feel sorry for her, but I am happy that she found what she wanted to do in the US. I am happy to see that she is thinking positively. She has graduated from university, and she is now working for an IT company. She is still going out with her boyfriend from high school. I'm kind of looking forward to their wedding, but I miss my little daughter at the same time. But I think I can trust her boyfriend. I'm looking forward to seeing Nicole become a wonderful mother, with her asshole mother as the bad role model. Kira, tomorrow is finally your wedding! Congratulations! I can't believe you and Kenny are finally tying the knot! I'm feeling emotional already, you know? Hey, Hillary, thanks a bunch. Am I being ahead of myself here? Maybe I should have saved it for tomorrow. <laughs> Not at all. You and the in-laws have been so accepting and caring. I'm really grateful for treating me like your own family. Even our dog Fluffy has taken a liking to you. <laughs> Remember when he jumped all over you and didn't leave you alone during your first visit? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And you, thank you so much. You've been there right from the start until now, despite being in the middle of a job hunt. Oh, come on. I'm already done with it anyway. Oh, you got an offer? Congrats. Thanks. I got it just yesterday. Guess we have to celebrate for you too then. It's fine, really. Seriously, you've helped us so much with the wedding. Especially getting that amazing poolside garden inside a five-star hotel for the reception. It's incredible, all thanks to your connection. Just doing my duty as an older sister. Our parents are remarried, so Kenya and I are step-siblings, you know? But since he became my stepbrother, I've always wanted to do anything for him. The same goes for you, Kira. I want us to be like real sisters. That's so sweet. It's really reassuring to have you around. But that's not all, you know. What do you mean? I actually planned a surprise for you guys tomorrow. I hope you'll like it. I'll reveal more during the reception, so look forward to it. A surprise? I'm so excited. I promise you won't be disappointed. Guess you've got a lot to do for tomorrow. I'll let you go now. See you. Hey, Hillary, what the heck were you thinking? Pushing Kira into the pool during the reception? That's not true, Kenny. I didn't do it intentionally, you know? It was just an accident. From where I was standing, it sure looked like you deliberately pushed her. You were the only one close to her at that moment. Does she think the same too? 
She's still unconscious. You know she twisted her ankle when she fell and drowned. She swallowed a lot of water. The doctor says she'll be okay though. But man, having the ambulance show up in the middle of the reception was a complete disaster. She was so looking forward to the wedding and it meant a lot to me too. All ruined because of you, god darn it. I swear I didn't mean any harm. You gotta believe me. She's my sister-in-law for crying out loud. I would never intentionally harm my family. You and I aren't blood related either, but we've been like real siblings, haven't we? I want the same relationship with her. Right. I guess I was wrong. Sorry for doubting you. No worries. I'm glad you believe me. I hope she wakes up soon. Yeah, me too. I want to visit her soon, but mom, dad and everyone else are still upset. I'll make sure they're settled first. Thanks. Everyone needs a reliable sister like you. I'd do anything for you. Don't hesitate to lean on me. You're the best. I'll get in touch again once Kira wakes up. Hi, Hilary. I'm sorry for causing trouble at the reception. I heard you looked after my family. Oh, you came around already? I thought I got you pretty good. <laughs> Excuse me? It would have been better if you'd just gone to the other side. Um, Hilary, are you okay? Why do you ask? Telling someone to go to the other side. You're not seriously thinking that, right? I'm dead serious. <laughs> what? Pushing you into the pool and messing up that crappy reception felt so good. I wish I could have finished you off. That's the only regret. Pushing me? You were the one who pushed me into the pool? I did feel a force on my back, but I had no idea who it was. Even when I asked Kenny, he said he didn't see anything. Oh, great! Huh? See, he's got my back after all. He trusts me more than he trusts you. Pushing you was the right call. You're not fit to be his wife after all. Wait, what's gotten into you suddenly? You said you were happy about our marriage. You even mentioned wanting to be like real sisters. Remember? I was just playing along, of course. <laughs> When we first met, everyone was around, so I had to pretend to be happy for you guys, you know, for the show. I wouldn't just hand Kenny over to someone who appeared out of nowhere. Never! Out of nowhere? We've been together for seven years since our freshman year of college. I've been in love with him for 26 years, since I was four. Even if you deeply care about your brother, this is way over the top. Not as my brother. I've decided to marry him since I was four. Um... We aren't blood-related siblings. So when I found out we could get married, I was over the moon. When I first met him, I felt a strong sense of destiny. He's my fate, my future husband. I felt it in my gut. Do you really think a four-year-old can feel all that? Shut up! You came butting in and overshadowing me. So, I came up with an amazing scheme to finish you off in the pool at a beautiful hotel. But you're as resilient as a cockroach and ruined everything. I'm glad to be resilient. I can't stand the thought of being sent off for such a ludicrous reason. I understand that you resent me, but guess what? I'm his wife. The wedding might have been disrupted, but we've already submitted our marriage license. So, what's your point? You can get divorced, you know. I'm not giving him up to you. You're lucky it just ended with a fall in the pool this time. You won't be so lucky next time. <laughs> Until you kick the buckets or divorce him, I won't hesitate to do what I need to. If that's what you're up for, bring it on. I'll take appropriate measures too. Of course, I'll let Kenny know about this. Do whatever you want. He's on my side. He's my sweet future husband who stands up for me. Whatever you say won't diminish the 26 years of bond. <laughs> hey, what have you done? What are you talking about? Don't pretend. I just got a rejection notice from the company where I had the job offer. You must have done something. I think you're overthinking. No way. With what happened, it's suspicious how conveniently the offer got rescinded. I'm telling you, you're misunderstanding something. First of all, you never received an offer. Yeah, right. What are you talking about? 
Once an offer is made, there needs to be a valid reason to rescind it. But since you haven't received an offer yet, I had them just process it as a regular rejection. They were about to send out the letter in a day. It was seriously close. <laughs> How do you know all that? Do you even know who I am? Huh? You're Kira. You're the despicable woman who married my brother. Anything else? What else? Ugh, you don't know? I'm astounded. You don't even know about the CEO whose company you wanted to work for? Huh? The CEO? What? You? I was surprised too. I've been busy preparing for the wedding, so I left the business to do COO for a while. I had no clue you interviewed for a job at my company. That's got to be a lie. I did mention it when we first met. Weren't you listening? Well, yeah, I just thought you were bluffing. A clueless woman like you is the CEO? Impossible. Clueless? That's rude, you know. Well, I'm a bit ashamed of myself at how close I got to leaving this life because of you. But thanks to your bold move, my HR staff noticed you and your hiring got stopped. No way! You know, a lot of my employees were at the wedding. I couldn't believe that with so many guests there, no one saw you pushing me. I asked around a bit and got a bunch of people who witnessed it. There are plenty who saw you in action right at that moment. When I checked, I found a crucial shot among the others the photographer captured. Ha, huh, whatever. There are plenty of job opportunities out there in this world. I decline to work for your company anyway. I've got Kenny. No matter what you or anyone else says, he'll always have my back. I don't think so, Hillary. Huh? Kenny? He wanted to chat with you directly after I showed him our conversation, so I added him here. I heard everything after Kira woke up. It was you who pushed her after all. I was a fool to trust you, even for a moment. Kenny? Why? How could you believe this woman over me? We've built a bond as siblings for 26 years, but you choose her over me? Sorry, but I can't trust you anymore. I'm furious and honestly, disgusted. Disgusted? What do you mean? I'm beautiful, ain't I? I've always been there for you and watched over you. I'm your big sister for God's sake. That's the thing. You said you trusted me. As a family, I trusted you. We're not blood related, but I relied on you like a real sister. You were always caring to me and our parents. I thought you were a good person. I never thought you were the kind of person who would push Kira into a pool or threaten her. But what else could I do? You picked that woman over me. I thought maybe if I got rid of her, you'd choose me. That doesn't make any sense. Even if she were gone, I don't even want to think about it. But even then, I wouldn't choose you. How come? Don't you see how much I love you? That creeps me out, you know. I was only one when you were four. Thinking you looked at me like that since I was a baby gives me chills. Seriously. I showed him all the messages you sent me before. He got goosebumps for real. It was pretty sad. That can't be true. I can't believe you're not accepting my love. Ah, uh, I get it. You're being threatened by her, right? Huh? What? Kenny, you can be honest, you know. It's okay to say I'm the one you truly love. You want to divorce that shallow fling from college and be with me, who's been with you for 26 years, right? Got it. Yes! I want nothing to do with you anymore. What? You've got a lot to say about the love of my life. Listen, she started a business and has been more successful since college. She wanted to prioritize work over marriage, but I begged her to reconsider. I promised her I'd never make her regret it and to make her happy. She finally agreed after I pleaded and persuaded her. Wow. I'm glad I married him. He treats me so well and I'm really happy. You've got to be kidding me. I thought she was the one who seduced you. You tried to send the woman I adored to the other side. You pretended to be happy and celebrate our marriage but laughed behind the scenes, right? I should have declined the poolside wedding when you suggested it. I can never forgive you for what you did to her. Don't say that, Kenny. We're siblings bonded by strong ties, right? 
We've always had each other's backs. You're not my sister anymore. Get lost. Stay out of our lives from now on. No, please. Have you guys had enough chat between the siblings? I think the police should be arriving at your place soon. What? The police? For what? Well, you're a suspect for attempted murder. I mean, I did mention there's photographic evidence of you pushing me into the pool, right? Jeez, going to the police is overreacting. I apologize, so please reconsider. I already reported you, so... Kenny! Convince her! It was actually me who suggested going to the police. I felt I had to be firm about this, especially since you're my family. This is too much! I've already told mom and dad about this. They said if you're guilty, they want you to reflect on it and take responsibility. Hillary tried to evade the arrest and fled from her home before the police arrived. But the family dog, Fluffy, tracked her scent and they found her. She was taken away in the back of a patrol car. Ha ha ha. Regarding the incident of being pushed into the pool, it was eventually settled out of court, so she didn't end up in prison. After being rejected by my company, she struggled to find a job. She tried asking her parents and relatives for help, but they all turned her down. Ha ha ha. In the end, she's juggling multiple part-time jobs to cover my hospital bill, the cleaning expenses for my wedding dress, and the compensation I claimed. As for me, my professional and private lives are going amazingly, and I'm enjoying life every day. Before marriage, I prioritized work and thought I didn't want kids. Lately, influenced by Kenny's love, I'm thinking maybe expanding the family wouldn't be a bad idea. Your dress looks gorgeous. It's flaming red. It's a wedding dress, so it's pure white, right? You mean it's angelic? The dress from my bachelorette party is red, though. Nah, <laughs> it's not about the color, you know. Any dress would burn the same way, right? It's on fire, you know. It's on flame. What do you mean? I threw the dress you were supposed to wear for the wedding in a barrel. And I'm burning it in my backyard as we chat. It's cold today, so it's warming me up. <laughs> Burning flames are beautiful, you know. It's way more impressive than just a plain white piece of fabric. You're kidding, right? Maybe it's made of synthetic fibers. It's burning really well. Woohoo! You've got to be kidding me. You're just bluffing, right? You still think it's a joke. <laughs> it's really burning. I'm filming it, so I'll send it to you later. We're getting married tomorrow. What on earth are you thinking? You said you were going to drop it off at the venue, so I gave it to you. This is really messed up. You're pretty gullible too. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? This is unbelievable. Well, if you don't have anything to wear, then we don't have to get married, right? You don't want to marry me? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I burned the dress because I don't want to get married tomorrow. <laughs> Instead of doing that, why not just talk it out and call off the wedding? You're likely to throw a tantrum or cry, you know. I'm annoyed at dealing with that kind of thing. Don't you love me anymore? I'm having pre-wedding jitters. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, I feel like I'm burning up in a bright red flame right now. All thanks to your dress. <laughs> if you lost your feelings for me, you could have just said so. There was no need to burn it. That dress is actually... Well, you have nothing to wear, so the wedding will be cancelled. <laughs> you have no use for that trash, right? Hold on a sec. You're putting me in a tough spot. The day before the wedding. What about the venue and the guests? Some of them came from afar and are staying at hotels from today. Just take care of it however you want. What about the cancellation fee? This is your fault. You should pay for it. What the heck did I do? You cheated. What? When? I saw you at the station a week ago. You were walking arm in arm with another guy. When I saw that, I got the jitters, or more like I was disappointed. I mean, I couldn't calm my nerves unless I burned the dress. <laughs> You're lying. I commute by car. I haven't been to the station in a month. No, nah, it was definitely you. That's why I'm so upset. <laughs> You're just looking for a reason to break up. If you say I cheated, then show some evidence. I don't have any. I was too devastated to take pictures. This is just way out of line. 
what you're saying and doing doesn't match at all. There's no evidence of cheating, and you're talking about the pre-marriage jitters, and then burning the dress. If there's tension before marriage, it's not going to work out in the first place. You should be grateful it happened before we tied the knot. I did love you, you know. Ew! Don't say that. <laughs> I don't love you, just so you know. I never cheated, just so you know. I saw it with my own eyes. Can't believe what a cheater claims. I should sue you for emotional damage, but out of consideration for my ex-fiance, I'll let that slide. Jake. Ew! Don't call my name anymore. Grosses me out coming from you. <laughs> This is so spiteful. This is way too much. I'm Audrey, a 28-year-old fashion merchandiser. I've been in a relationship with Jake for two years. When he popped the question half a year ago, I was over the moon. I never expected things to turn out like this. After that chat, I received a video of my dress up in the flame. That dress had a significant meaning to me. I was shattered and couldn't stop crying. I couldn't understand how someone was capable of doing something so cruel. I was filled with anger and hatred for the person I had once decided to spend the rest of my life with. We've called off the engagement, and I'm preparing to seek compensation. Meanwhile, Jake's still trying to hurt me. I heard from a friend that if we cancel the engagement, I can reclaim the ring. I don't need the ring back, but just pay me back. Why should I? Because I can't recover from the shock you caused by cheating. It was around twenty thousand dollars, but I'll give you ten thousand dollars with an ex-fiance discount. Be grateful that I'm such a nice guy. There's no reason for me to pay you. I didn't cheat. Take it and leave. Oh really? Are you sure about that? About what? This is you and another man. When did you take this? You sound flustered. <laughs> This is my boss. We went to a bar to celebrate after a big project finished. It might look like we were alone from this angle, but there were other colleagues behind us. When did you take such a malicious picture? But how will your mom, who knows nothing about it, react? She'll be worried in her hospital bed. Are you going to show it to her? She was planning to temporarily leave the hospital just for the wedding, right? She's probably heartbroken now. If she sees this at a time like that, what's going to happen? <laughs> her condition could worsen, and you might never see her again. Ha ha ha! Shut up! How can you say such horrible things so casually? You've already caused enough damage with a canceled engagement. I was on good terms with her, so she might believe me. And by the way, I'll tell her that you went into a fit of rage and burned the dress. Okay? I'd never do such a thing. She won't believe you. How heartwarming! The love between a mother and daughter in a single parent family. <laughs> I wonder which one of us she'd believe. Do you want to give it a try? I got rid of the dress, and there's no evidence of me burning it. <laughs> well, before confirming all that, there's a chance her heart could stop due to shock. Are you willing to take that risk? <laughs> You're threatening me. How can you ask me to pay ten thousand dollars? The chunk of my money's already gone. Covering cancellation fees and stuff, you ran off without paying a penny, and you pushed all the responsibilities of explaining to the guests and relatives onto me. I don't even know where you are now. Why would I tell you? <laughs> It's your fault for cheating. I told you I have not. Just hold off on that ten thousand dollars for now. Don't make up stuff to tell my mom, please. Oops, sorry. I already sent it. <laughs> What? My finger slipped. Haha. <laughs> What on earth have you done? Next time, a picture like this won't cut it. I'll ask a pro to make even more scandalous Photoshop images. <laughs> you said there was no evidence of what you did. But are you aware that you're leaving these threats on WhatsApp? Remember, I have the video of you burning the dress. You better watch your back on the dark streets. I'll snatch your phone and delete your chat history and the video if I have to. You're truly a despicable person. It's over for you as a human being. Good for you, not having to marry someone like me, right? Remember, I'll make sure you regret this. I've got the compensation ready. Wow, you're quick. 
I'm impressed, Audrey. <laughs> it's 200,000. Wait, there's one extra zero. <laughs> yes, that's correct. You're giving me that much? It's much more than I expected. You're so generous. Are you by any chance trying to make amends and get back together with me? Unfortunately, I have no intention of that. <laughs> what are you talking about? I refuse to get back together with you. You'll pay me that amount. Just keep your jokes to that plain face of yours. <laughs> you should keep your jokes to your thinning hair, please. You, the thing I'm bothered about the most. First, the wedding cancellation fee. It was almost a full amount because it was so last minute. It's $50,000. I'm not budging on that. Then the compensation for threats and insults. It's $20,000. I've already spoken to a lawyer about this. Huh? You're really clueless. Why would I pay you? You're the one who cheated. I have evidence. Speaking of cheating, it seems like everyone dislikes you. <laughs> it's laughable. What are you talking about? I can't say who told me, but it seems like you've been showing off to everyone, huh? She's prettier than that ugly fiancé of mine, right? I mean, another girl. Wait. She's the real deal now. Darn it. Who the heck snitched on me? I said I can't tell you. Get it through your thick skull, idiot. God darn you. I have plenty of friends who are willing to testify. Seems like everyone was waiting for a chance to take down a scumbag like you. <laughs> They're on my side. Face it. Darn it. And lastly, the cost of the dress. No, wait. It doesn't add up. Why does it total $200,000? It's just a dress, nothing special. That dress cost $130,000. <gasps> you have no idea what that dress is worth. It's trash, I can tell. My mom married my late dad, the CEO of a big corporation, but he passed away shortly after I was born. So what? My paternal grandmother was greedy and didn't give my mom the inheritance she deserved. Instead, she left her with just $100,000 in that wedding dress, and then kicked her out. All because she didn't produce a son and heir. It's your fault for being a girl, then. That dress was a one-of-a-kind couture piece my late dad had made for her. What's that? A one-of-a-kind cuckoo? Shut up. You really don't understand its value, do you? Your mom should have sued your grandmother. She's dumb, too. She could have won if she did, but back then, lawsuits weren't as common as they are now. So? The dress you burned was that one. It's worth 130000 Do you have proof it was worth that much? My mom's very meticulous. She has the dress's order form and receipt. Of course, she also has pictures of her wearing it. The dress was so incredible that it attracted media attention. There should be magazines out there that can prove its value. Even so, there's no way it's still the same price as it was back then. Indeed. It was worth 160000 back then. What? Did you check the ashes? It had gemstones on it. Plus, you said it was synthetic, but it was mostly silk. No. The shop estimated its value at 130000 based on that alone. No way. That's a big oops, huh? So, let's talk about the total amount of 200000 you need to pay. Nah, not happening. I figured you'd say that. You can't win if you don't play. Too bad for you. Yeah, too bad for you too. Why? Are you familiar with asset seizure? I've got no clue. Such a law doesn't exist. You're hopelessly dumb, huh? Asset seizure allows forcibly seizing your possessions to make you pay up. Wouldn't you have to win in court for that to happen? It's pretty much guaranteed I'll win. I have a video of you burning the dress and plenty of testimonies. I've got compromising shots too. It's easy to expose the fakes in court. You know what happens if you present false evidence, right? Ugh. I can have your car, your apartment, your salary, everything seized for you. Don't. I won't be able to start a new life. Frankly, that's impossible in the first place. You'll end up under police custody anyway. Why would I? I'm not going to jail. I didn't do anything wrong. The thing is, you did. Everything you've done is a crime. 
burning the dress, warning me about being alone on a dark street, and threatening me with those pictures. There's evidence for it all. I've already contacted the police. Don't mess with me. I'm dead serious. You're in the wrong here. You're just so dull. Someone like you shouldn't come against me. <laughs> Look who's talking. If a handsome guy said the same, I might back down. But I don't want to hear it from you. <laughs> Darn it. My mom saw the photos you sent and didn't suspect me at all. When she found out about the dress being burned, she cried. I'll never forgive you for making her cry. Forgive me. I'm not joking around here. It's $200,000. Just imagine, that's a huge amount of money. It's enough to turn someone's life around. My new life... I would never marry a man with so much debt. Your past deeds will come to light soon. Remember that there are many people out there who hold grudges against you. My friends have already distanced themselves. I lost my friends and now I'm losing my girl too. Thanks for making me realize how shallow of a person you are. If we had gone through the, with the wedding, I'm sure I would have had a miserable marriage. I'm really glad. Right. Let's start over. Huh? We'll get back together. Let's just register our marriage without a wedding ceremony. I love you, Audrey. I wish you were next to me right now so I could kick you with all my might. I allow you to kick me, so let's get married. I mean, you contacted me because you wanted us to get back together in the first place, right? Just keep your jokes to that smelly feet of yours, will you? You mentioned something I'm bothered about again. We're never getting back together. We'll only communicate through lawyers from now on. I'll block you on the phone. If you come near me, I'll take out a restraining order. Understood? Understood. My mom's about to be discharged from the hospital. I want to take her to a nice spa resort, so pay the compensation promptly. I'll say it again. It's $200,000. Stop dilly-dallying and start gathering as much money as you can. Come on. Can you lower the amount of it? No, I won't budge a single cent. We're exes. Can't you cut me a little slack? Declined. Please, Audrey, spare me. Pay up quickly, you scumbag. Jake was apprehended by the police. While I like to see him behind bars, I also want him to quickly pay the compensation. It's a bit of a dilemma. The court ruled entirely in my favor, which was expected but still satisfying. He managed to sell the car and I got $20,000 in advance. With that, I brought my mom to a somewhat upscale spa resort. We talk a lot about various things and it's the first time in a while that we relax together. Maybe I have that idiot to thank for the precious time we're having, but I have no intention of forgiving him. I'll make him pay, even if it takes a lifetime. He's probably in detention right now. It must be cold there. I might as well bask in this warm zakuji and enjoy my sense of superiority. Am I a terrible person? <laughs> what are you doing? You didn't even get my shirt dry cleaned. You're not even at home? Where are you? Sorry, the dry cleaner isn't open today. It's temporarily closed, so I'll see if it's open tomorrow. I'm at the library now. Is there something wrong? What do you mean? What are you going to do about the shirt I was planning to wear tomorrow? If one is closed, you can go to another one, right? But you're at the library. Seriously? Isn't this negligence of your duties? Negligence of my duties? What are you talking about? Just what it means. I've been working all this past week, even doing overtime. And what have you been doing? You couldn't even get one shirt dry cleaned. What exactly were you up to? I pack your lunch and take care of the household chores. I was planning to iron that shirt when I got home. I don't see any reason why you should accuse me of negligence. No way. You iron my shirts? I told you before, right? Your ironing sucks. I told you not to do it anymore. But it's too expensive to use the cleaners every time. You don't even give me money for it. Why are you making it sound like I'm at fault here? It's because you can't do your duties properly. If your ironing was better, there would be no need for dry cleaning. That may be true, but... Why should I have to pay for it then? 
Why are you being so ridiculous? <laughs> and your lunch is weird too. Like, what was that yesterday? Frozen pizza? <laughs> it's funny how you can call that a lunch you made. <laughs> Come on. Do you understand? Your way of doing housework equals negligence of your duties to anyone who sees it. <laughs> Yet you're challenging me. How dare you? If you have time to go to the library, go to the dry cleaner now. Now? But I have to... You're trying to come up with excuses again. All right, fine. I won't be back for dinner tonight. But I've already started to prepare at home. Huh. Do you think you deserve recognition just because you did your job? No way. Your job is worth nothing, as long as it's below par. <laughs> Jeez. If you have a problem, why don't you work too? Then you'll see how naive you are. All right, but would you share the chores with me then? What? You'll have to balance home and work at the same time, of course. Are you messing with me? You're a woman, it's expected, you know. <laughs> You're really naive, aren't you? You'll have to make as much money as I do before you can say that in the first place. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll eat out tonight. I don't need dinner at home. Get my shirt cleaned and ready by Monday, okay? If you iron it again and it looks messy, I'll be pretty upset. Hey, were you not home earlier? There was a package from a courier for you. Because you weren't there, I got a call on my phone. What are you doing? If you're a stay-at-home wife, you should be there. You can't just neglect your responsibilities. Oh, didn't I mention? I started a part-time job. A part-time job? Oh, so you really started, huh? I was on my way home just now. And? What is it? What? Don't tell me you're going to use that as a reason to make me do housework. No, of course not. I've started working outside, so obviously I couldn't receive the package, you know. After all, we have a lot of expenses, and I thought I should earn money too. If you were willing to do housework as well, I'd be happy, but... That's definitely your ulterior motive. I'm not planning anything like that. Then why did you get a job? Simply to earn more money? I also thought I should earn money for myself too. Of course, I plan to contribute to the household as well. Hmm. All right, I guess. Feel free to do as you like. Yeah, thanks. Are you still at work? Sorry, I'm just on my way home. The task took a bit longer. You've been carried away lately. You have a part-time job or whatever, but I think you're starting to feel like you're the breadwinner. Lately, you haven't been cleaning the house properly. Your already lax attitude has become even worse. I thought I could let the missed courier delivery slide, but I can't overlook it anymore. A woman's job is to take care of the household. It's outrageous to abandon it for some meaningless part-time job. I'm sorry, but there's no other way. Our savings have been decreasing lately. We've been married for just a year, but thinking ahead to when we might have kids, it's just more expenses piling up. In that case, I think we'll need dual incomes. I'd like you to understand at least a bit. Who do you think you are, huh? What? Why do I have to obey your command? I didn't mean it that way. You know, this is really irritating. You don't get to preach to me. Asking for my understanding as if you're someone special? Do you think you have the right to voice your opinions to me? I'm not allowing such presumptuousness. I apologize. Oh, by the way, my paycheck came yesterday. It was in an envelope. Do you know where it went? Oh, I put it into the account. Into the account tied to the household expenses? I checked, but there was nothing. No, in my personal account. Is there a problem? Well, I mean, if there's not enough money in the household account, I'm not going to be able to make the payments. I want you to put it in there, and that's what I intended. I'm working for the expenses and not for your pocket money. Do you enjoy irritating me? I handle our finances, right? So it doesn't matter which account your paycheck goes to. That may be true, but... Then why are you complaining? You know, husbands are normally the head of the household, so that money is the husband's money. It's perfectly reasonable to consider all the money you earn from your job to be mine, and in fact, that's the way it should be. That's... I'm working because I wanted some money to spend on my own within reason. I did say I was going to put it into the house, but all of it is too much. Oh, I see. I was going to put half of it in, you know. You can lie as much as you want. 
Well, I lost all interest in giving you the money because you said that. Not fair. No matter how much money you make, it all goes to my account from now on. Fine. So get back now and make some food, you good for nothing. Oh, by the way, have you been coming home earlier lately? You sound to be at home already. Stop blabbering and come home now. Got it. Good afternoon, this is Dave from Eagle Eye Investigation. I've been tasked with investigating your husband's debts. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Our household budget is always tight. Although he says he manages the finances, I check his bank statement in his file today. To my surprise, there was no money there. I'm quite sure I was looking at the correct account statement. Right, I understand. May I confirm if it's okay to go back three years for the investigation? Yes, please, go ahead. I'm embarrassed to say this, but I have very little money personally. I won't be able to pay more than the amount I mentioned before. As long as it's within the three-year time frame, there's no problem regarding the agreed-upon fee. If we need to go further back, additional costs will apply. Thank you. I appreciate your understanding and help. Hey, you're still doing a part-time job, right? We gotta notice that some payments are overdue. Can't you even manage such little things properly? This is plain neglect of your duties. Also, hand over your paycheck soon. They should be going into my account. If you hide or spend that money elsewhere, there'll be consequences. Hey, are you there? Answer me. Yes, but what are you going to use my salary for? You're not using it for our utility bills, right? Even using it as pocket money is excessive, don't you think? What's it to you? Stop talking back. Besides the utilities, there are others that I need to handle separately. They are expenses you don't understand. You don't know anything. So what are those payments for, if you don't mind telling me? Huh? Why do I need to tell you? I'd like to check, that's all. Shut up. I'm busy right now. Then, for example, is it for the mortgage? Yeah, that's one of them. What about utility bills like electricity? Included. Satisfied now? But both of those are linked to our household account, aren't they? I double-checked and it seems like our loan, electricity, water, gas, and other things are all connected to our household account. So what are you paying for? Shut up. There are other expenses, alright? Things you couldn't possibly understand. Hmm, basically it's personal expenses, right? Yes. Is that what you wanted to hear? Oh, I knew it. No, when I say personal, I mean it's related to the house in some way. I see. Are you at work now? Yeah. But you can tell lies as much as you want, right? What are you talking about? Are you doubting me? Me of all people. Do you know what'll happen if you cross me like this? You should know the consequences of constantly lying. You'll have a hard time later. I know you're not at your workplace right now. I called the company and they said you were terminated and no longer work there. No way. That's got to be a mistake. You were fired three months ago, right? I've got all the evidence. You embezzled company money and got fired for misconduct. How do you know about that? I hired a private investigator with the money I secretly saved for my job. A private investigator? Wait, so you suddenly started working, and you were using the money for that? Right, so everything about you for the past three years came to light. Three years? You've been in debt all along, huh? It's whopping $50,000. You've been hiding it since we were dating. You're a complete idiot. You said I was neglecting my duties. What right do you have to say that to me? You haven't been working at all, and you can't even manage your money properly. You're the biggest offender. No, that's not... It's not my debt. It's all because I became a cosigner for my friend's loan. Oh, I see. So you're a cosigner. That's right. It's not my fault. My friend signed up for me without my permission. I'm a victim. According to the report from the investigator, the causes of the debts are gambling, squandering, and womanizing. The places where you borrowed the money were primarily associated with these, though. Whatever. You're so full of crap. What makes you think you have the right to say that to me? I'll divorce you. Are you okay with that? Sure, let's get a divorce. And don't ever come close to me. So long. 
I feel so much better now. Wait, you're kidding, right? Well, is there any benefit to me staying with you? A man who doesn't work and is covered in debts? Ugh, it's true, I owe money for a long time. I did take the company's money and I got fired for it. But what am I supposed to do now? Well? I have a history of misconduct now, and it's tough to find another job with that kind of record. Please, your part-time job is all I have. Help me out. Let's, uh, start over and care for each other like before, okay? I'll really change my ways. What do you say? How long are you going to treat me like I'm an idiot? You're just a complete loser. I'd divorce you today or tomorrow if I could. I don't want anything to do with you ever again. Don't mess around with me, you piece of trash. I won't accept a divorce. You better pay off my debts. Don't you know that there's no rule that says a married couple has to pay off each other's debts that were acquired before marriage? Well, even if you don't agree to the divorce, I wonder what your parents will say. I told them everything this morning. No, you're lying. I showed them the results of the investigation. They're coming over tonight. Well, make sure you come home early from your so-called workplace. <laughs> See you later. Hey, wait. I'm sorry. Just not my parents. Wilson's father was extremely angry with him, and it turned into a big commotion with physical altercations. We had to call an ambulance at one point, and afterward, his parents apologized to me, and we filed for a divorce. In the end, the domestic violence was acknowledged, and Wilson was ordered to pay alimony. Of course, there was no support from his parents. He took out another loan for it, and I haven't heard from him since. There have been rumors that he's surrounded by intimidating individuals and is forced to work day and night. I'm still working part-time at a clothing store, and I'm savoring the fact that I can actually save money now. Julie, I had your college acceptance withdrawn. You need to get a job after high school. What? Did you really have it withdrawn? Why? What the heck? You promised me I could go to college if I passed, right? I said you could go to Harvard if you got in. I thought you'd give up. I didn't expect you to actually get accepted. I really had no intention of sending you to college. That's why I asked them to cancel your admission. Please tell me you're joking. I can't believe you didn't want to send me to school. If you go to college, who's going to support us? I thought I'd feel less stressed financially. You're our little money tree. What? We're a poor family. Since your father died in the car accident, we've been unstable financially. He didn't even have life insurance. It's been so difficult raising two children on my own. I know. That's why I work part-time. I chose a public high school so that it would cost as little as possible. I'm planning to take a student loan for college. I try my best not to be your burden. Shut up. College kids just want to drink and party. I'm not going to let you have all the fun. I don't want to be the only one suffering. What? First of all, I didn't want to work. That's why I married your father, who ran a small business. I was living comfortably as a housewife. And in the blink of an eye, I became a poor, single mother. I don't want to work anymore. Know what I mean? Now it's your turn. You're going to have to work to support us from now on. You want me to support you? I've worked hard all my life to raise you and your sister. I think I deserve some freedom. Anyway, you don't have time to go to college. Find a job when school's done and support us. Oh my god. Sadia is still in middle school. We have to pay her education. I want to send her to a good high school and the college she picks. You'll have to work hard for that. I expect you to pay for all her school fees. What? Hold on a second. Are you going to let her choose her high school and college? You told me I could only go to a public high school. And then you cancelled my college admission without even asking me. Listen, Sadia is adorable. Unlike you, she's special. Unlike me? You're annoying because you're just like your father. I only loved him because he had money. But I hate him now because he died and left me with nothing. 
I can't love you because you remind me too much of him. Is that why you hate me so much? I know you are cold to me, but not to Sadia. But I never thought that was the reason. On the other hand, your sister is the spitting image of me as a child. She's an absolute angel. I'm sure her charm will grab some rich guy's heart. What she needs is some opportunities to meet some classy people. Even if it costs a little more money, she has to get into a good high school and college. Are you telling me I'm supposed to pay for it all? I wanted to go to college too. Do I have to put my dreams aside to work for my sisters? Isn't your little sister adorable? A big sister has to work hard for her little sister. Don't be sulky. Go find a job. Be happy you got in, even if you can't go. I was serious about going to college. You told me it was Harvard or nothing for me, so I studied really hard. I studied my butt off and did all the right things. Do you know how hard it is to get into Harvard? This whole thing is so unfair. Stop complaining. You're difficult. Be good to your mother. Pardon me? Most children wouldn't even think about going to school if they knew their family was in a tough financial situation. They wouldn't say, Mom, I'm going to find a job to help out. But look at you. You don't even try to be nice to your mother. So you understand? Anyway, go find a job. Hey, Junie! Did you see the photo? Isn't that bag amazing? It's a high-end brand. I bought it right away. Of course I saw it. It's great you can afford such an expensive one. Well, I did graduate from a prestigious school. Do you like it? You must be jealous. I don't imagine you can afford this kind of thing, can you? What? You only have a high school diploma. You don't make very good money, do you? Mom told me, you still make only $30,000 a year. You've been working your butt off since you graduated from high school. That's all you can make. I feel really sorry for people with low education. You know the reason why I only graduated from high school. How can you say that? I didn't ask you not to go to college. Why don't you find someone to marry? You're a high school grad with a crappy income and you're still single. That doesn't sound good. If you don't marry young, no one will take you. Thank you for your concern. Here's some news for you. I'm getting married soon. Whoa, really? I've been seeing someone and he proposed to me. This might be a good opportunity for me to move out. You've graduated from college and you make good money on your own. And mom still works part time. You can support yourselves now. You don't need me anymore. You have a boyfriend? What a surprise. If I had to guess, I'd bet you two are a lot alike. Is he also a high school graduate? He doesn't have a lot of money, does he? Actually, he has a college degree. We were classmates in high school. We were supposed to go to the same college together. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to the college, so we drifted apart. But we reconnected and started dating. What? You guys applied to the same school? Is he a Harvard grad? Yes. We were the only ones in our year who got offers of acceptance. I really wish we could have enjoyed campus life together. What does he do for a living? Does he work for a big company? Does he work for a foreign company? Does he work in finance? What's his job? He's a doctor. His parents run a clinic. He's going to take it over eventually. And he's the son of the owner? Why did he decide to marry you? I don't get it. It's not fair you're going to marry the rich guy. You're just a high school graduate. Marriage doesn't require high academic achievement. Besides, who I marry is none of your business. Anyway, I'll be moving out soon. I won't show my face a lot after I leave. Take care of mom. Julie, give your fiancé to Sadia. You and the doctor are not compatible. 
Sadia is the right woman for him. Mom! Are you crazy? I'm serious. Your fiancé would probably prefer to marry a prettier woman. Sadia is cute and educated. The perfect person for him. As a sister, you don't want her to be happy? Don't you want me to be happy? I gave up on my dreams of higher education to pay for her tuition. And now you're asking me to give him to her? This is outrageous! Why do I have to put up with this just because I'm her sister? Shut up. I don't care what you think. You should listen to me and do as I say. Don't tell me you've forgotten that I've raised you this far. Unbelievable. Another thing. I don't like the fact that you decided to leave us to get married. Without even telling us. I need you to keep working for me. I just quit my part-time job. What am I going to do without you? Why did you quit your job? Sadia finally graduated from college, got a job, and is ready to settle down. You and I have been working our butts off up until now. I think I deserve to be free. So, I quit my job to take early retirement. And I'm going to have a leisurely life living off of you. Huh? That was my plan. I can't believe you didn't tell me you were getting married. I want you to continue to work to support us. That's what an eldest daughter is supposed to do. I'm not going to let you turn your life around to lead a happy, luxurious life without me. What am I to you? I'm used to seeing you spoil Sadia. But it's not fair you try to take my happiness away. I only think of you as an ATM. Because I gave birth to you, you have life. So you'll have to work to take care of me for the rest of your life. This is nonsense. I've got an idea. I can ask you, or rather, your sister's husband-to-be, for help. I imagine he can send us enough money to have a nice life. In that case, we won't need you. You can get out of the house any time. You've been treating me like a bank machine for years. And now, you are telling me to leave because you're done with me? Enough is enough. I've never cared for you and your attitude. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you to give him to her. And don't ever show your face around here again. Fine. I don't need you anymore. Sadia should marry him. How much should I ask him to send us? <laughs> One thing we agree on is that I'll not show my face around here again. That's it. And Sadia is not going to marry my fiancé. What? I can't stand the family drama. I'm not going to show my face, as you asked. I'm going to cut off our ties once I'm married. Please, stay out of my life. What's wrong with you? Why are you so upset? Don't talk back to me. I'm your mother. Do as I say. Give him to Sadia. You're not a perfect match anyway. A high school graduate with no income like you Married to a doctor, it will only end in divorce. That may be true. Julia is a smart woman. She might get fed up with me one day and divorce me. What? Who's this? Hi, Hazel. It's George, your daughter's fiancé. You mean you're her husband-to-be? And your father runs a medical clinic, right? I'm sorry to introduce myself like this. Judy told me she didn't want us to meet. Oh dear, I'm sorry she's so selfish. She's not highly educated, unfortunately. She doesn't have much common sense. But you know what? Her sister Sadia is an intelligent woman. I'm pretty sure you two will be compatible. I don't quite understand what you're talking about. I'm more proud of Sadia than Julie. She has a college degree. She's admirable. And she's younger than Julie. I'm sure you'll like her. Why don't you forget Judy for now and come meet Sadia? I've already met her, actually. She wasn't very classy. Even my other classmates got turned off. What? What do you mean they got turned off? She's such a pretty woman and I'm very proud of her. My friends once asked me to join them on a group blind date. 
They needed more men. Of course, I let Julie know and went to the restaurant. I met Sadia there. Oh, you met her on a group date? She sure is cute, and a lot of guys liked her, at first. But she sounded desperate. She was just hunting for a future husband. That made them stay away from her. What's so wrong about that? A group date sounds like just a place to look for a partner. What's wrong with showing a desire to marry? It's okay to talk about your future and marriage, a little. But she was talking about which lavish condo minimum she wants to live in and the luxury cars she wants to drive. Not only that, she was saying she wants $10,000 allowance for herself monthly. It was pretty obvious my friends felt uncomfortable listening to her fantasy. Oh my, she's so funny sometimes, always joking around. I couldn't stand it, so I asked her a mean question. Sadia, if you could get all you desired, what would you do for your husband? I said, of course you do all the housework and raise perfect children, right? And then she said the craziest thing. Crazy? She said, I don't want to do the housework because it's a pain in the butt. I'd have two kids and make the elder one take care of the younger one. That was her response. Really? At this point, all the men and women were shocked. The strangest part was Sadia didn't understand why we all felt that way. She said, did I do something wrong? That's how I grew up. We were all stunned. Oh dear. Oh, Sadia. I can't believe she said that. That makes me look like I'm a lousy mother and that I pushed Judy to do everything. Actually, it sounds like you did. Since she was a teenager, she was responsible for the household expenses. She used to complain a lot when we were preparing for our entrance exams. She said she worked part-time and did all the housework too. She had to stay up all night to get enough time for preparation. Um, uh, that's... After we get married, I won't let you see her anymore. I want to give her a good life, so she won't need to sacrifice herself anymore. I want her to become happy and be herself. For that reason, I'm asking you to cut ties with her today. What? If you must contact her, please do so through me. I have to get going now. Bye. Julie, I need your help. Mom keeps talking crazy to me. She wants me to send her money every month. She's asking me for $1,000 monthly. You can do that, can't you? You have a college degree and work for a big company. You could afford to buy the expensive bag. Sure, I have a better job than you. But honestly, I don't make a lot of money. I make $2,000 and pay $1,000 for rent. After utilities and phone bills, I only have a couple hundred left. Oh, is that right? I guess you wouldn't understand. Just because I graduated from college doesn't mean my salary is insanely high. Still, you have all those luxury fashion items. You show off your expensive bags, earrings and clothes. I cut down on groceries to buy that stuff. I also go out with a lot of guys I meet at parties. They pay for meals and then I can afford that stuff. That's how you save money? Wow. But for some reason, the guys who used to pay for dinner haven't been calling me lately. They don't answer my texts or calls. They've also stopped sending me expensive gifts. Now you know why I can't send money to mom. I need your help. Nope. I'm married now. I've already decided to distance myself from you guys. What? Are you already married? Take care of mom. She wasn't nice to me. She's always loved you the best. You should support her in return. Oh my god. I can't support her on my own. I really need your help. Sadia continues to ignore mom's calls for money. Mom lost it and went to see Sadia at work. In front of the office, 
she yelled, Who raised you? And what's wrong with this company? My daughter can't afford to support me. The security guards had to drag my mother away. After that, it didn't take long for Sadia to feel awkward at work, so she quit her job. In the end, she reluctantly started living with mom again. She wanted to sell her clothes and fashion items to make ends meet. But mom and Sadia found out they were fake. When they found out it was all worthless, they almost had a heart attack. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.